Okay, Sandy, um, why don't you talk to me a little bit about Detect Together and why that's important for the fire service in general to understand. Detect Together, uh, we're in our 15th year anniversary right now, uh, and we were formed to reduce death by cancer. And with the knowledge of the epidemic of cancer in the fire service, we tooled our retooled our education to speak directly to the fire service. So knowing that in the United States, 40% of us will be diagnosed with cancer at some point in our lives, firefighters have a 9% greater chance. So that's almost half of firefighters will be diagnosed with cancer at some point in their lives. But the number that is even more frightening to me is there's a 14% greater risk of mortality from that diagnosis for firefighters. Hmm. And that's largely due to late detection. So it is true that that sometimes, um, or it appears to be true that, it, that there are some cancers that may be more aggressive in firefighters in their bodies. And there may be some certain cancers that show up maybe a little bit earlier than what the quote unquote norm would be. But, but the reality is it's large, that 14% greater mortality rate is largely due to late detection. And so Detect Together teaches firefighters how to recognize and acknowledge cancer symptoms. So our step one is know you're great, which means which means know your great health and how to acknowledge it. And, and it's kind of funny because it seems so simple to know what your great is. But if I said to you, hey, how are you doing today? You know, your answer is probably, oh, great, I'm good. But if I really started to pick it apart and say, well, how do you feel about, you know, obviously I'm not going to walk up to you on the street and say, how's your bowel movements today? But if I really started to pick through all of that stuff, you might say to me, that's been a little bit off. That's been a, you know, I got this pain in my back, but you know, whatever. I just, I just get through it. It's okay. It's, it's, I can handle it. Um, and so knowing what your grade is means know what your great health is, what's your baseline and what on your best day, what does that look like and what should it be? And then knowing that if there's something off in your great health, we're going to use the two week rule, which means acknowledge it, track it. And if it's there for two weeks, now you're going to move on to step three, which is sharing with your doctor. But there's an important indicator there. And knowing what your great health looks like means, and we're telling you in our three steps to tech program, we're telling you that you have to look for something um, that's a cancer symptom to be able to acknowledge or attract or um, understand that you might have a symptom that could be need care, right? And so think about how many cancers there are in the world. There's somewhere in the ballpark of about 200-ish types of cancer. So if we had to remember what all of those signs and symptoms are, forget it. We're not going to be able to remember that. But if I if I asked you what you think the most common cancer symptom is, what do you think it would be? Well, I'd start with pain. Hmm. Could be. Hmm. That's one that's a very common answer that I get when I ask that question. Hmm. I also get fatigue, lumps and bumps, rapid weight loss, unexpected oh, yeah. weight loss, right? So there's this whole list of headaches. There's this whole list of things. Uh, I was a high school teacher for almost 20 years. I had headaches all the time, but it didn't mean I had cancer. It meant that my body was waving the white flag, right? So all of those things could be signs of cancer, but they could be something else too. And so instead of looking for one particular sign or saying, oh, this is happening, this must be cancer. What we say is the most common cancer symptom is a subtle and persistent change in your health that lasts for two weeks or more. And this comes from our medical advisors saying the two week time period is the time we're really looking at um, because now it's the early stages of something. It's when it's most treatable, most curable, most most attackable, shall we say. Um, and, and that's the time when they want to be able to jump in and deal with it. So if you're going to share with your doctor because something in your great health has been off for two weeks, now you're going to the doctor's office with a list that's this long. If you let it go and it continues to spiral and then other things always pile on top of that, now you like go into the doctor's office and you unravel the scroll of complaints that you have and concerns that you have. And so now it gets really difficult to address that. So I know in the United States, we have a different um, healthcare system than you do in Canada, but here in the US, you have an average of about three to seven minutes when you walk into a doctor's office. And so you need to be prepared for that. And that's part of what we teach in Three Steps to Detect. We teach you how not only to recognize your great health, how to acknowledge when things are off, we give you an actionable timeline of two weeks, but then we we roll into talking about sharing with your doctor and how to do that, because that seems kind of like a simple statement. Oh, just share with your doctor. 
but we know we run into barriers. We, we talk to firefighters across the country and we hear a lot of feedback about the barriers that they're feeling that they're facing. And so rolling into that and kind of giving them some tools and resources about what they can do and how they can help to educate their primary care provider or their medical provider about their needs as a firefighter is really important. So that's a big part of our program is just um, really teaching them how to acknowledge their great health, understanding that when it's off, we don't wait. We can still be tough. We can still muscle through things, but we have to acknowledge them and deal with them at the same time. And then um, working collaboratively with your medical care providers so that we make sure that you are getting the best possible care. So you have the strongest team going. So how are people best able to reach out to you and connect and start this process for themselves if there's something that they need to address? Oh, very easy, very simple. We have a, a website called responsetimematters.org. And that is specific to the fire service. So you'll see, um, as soon as you log into responsetimematters.org, you'll see Jason Patton's face from uh, Fire Department Chronicles and Fire Department Coffee. You'll see his face there. He's partnered with us to make some great videos, mm. really acknowledging the education um, and kind of putting it in the forefront. But on that website, there's a couple of different options. One, we have some free online courses, online learning for firefighters, and that's always free for firefighters. They can go in 24 7, 365, and there's 11 courses in there. The first course is Three Steps Detect. So they could take it on their own. That takes about 25 minutes or so to get through that. The other 10 courses are all micro courses. The shortest one is five minutes, the longest one is 11 minutes. And it has things like, um, you know, what questions should I ask my doctor? How do I prepare for an appointment? Why am I at greater risk? And one of my favorites, how to do self exams. It's a five minute course on both breast and testicular exams. Since we know that testicular cancer is the number one cancer diagnosed in males between the ages of 15 and 44, mm -hmm. and firefighters are at a 1.6 greater risk of being diagnosed with testicular cancer. There is no other screening, but self exams. These are a critical tool in your healthcare toolbox that you need to use every month. And so that's a simple five minute course. So they can log into that for free. It's very easy for them to get in. Um, and then also there's another place on that website very soon right after the uh, online learning is to request training. So they can request virtual training from us. Uh, we are happy to zoom in to any department uh, and we work well with shifts. I mean, we understand the fire service. So we understand it's shift work. We understand that there's you know, group ABC, and it's going to take more than one presentation to get to the whole department. And I want to make sure it's very clear that we serve all of the fire service. So we're talking career, we're talking volunteer, on call, wildland, urban, whatever it is, everybody counts here in the fire service. And we really want to make sure that we can touch base with all of them. I come from the volunteer service myself. So I have a, a little bit of a soft spot for all the volunteers, but all of the fire service is included in our training. And it's funny because I had a conversation with a, one of my very good friends who's a firefighter who has survived cancer. And she's um, she's in the final stages of recovery of you know reconstruction and everything. And she started off as a wildland firefighter and really as a very intelligent person, didn't think too much about her exposures during that mm. Um, time as a wildland firefighter. And I was like, no, you, you don't, you were really exposed to a lot there. Mm. So we need to include everybody, all types of firefighters to make sure that they can access. Um, and we even this. talked briefly ahead of us discussing this about internationally. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And firefighting changes depending on what country you're in, but does it really, you're all fighting the same things, right? Mm -hmm. And so there might be some changes in gear. There might be some changes in equipment that you're using and, and possibly some materials that are used in the buildings and the homes and whatnot, but you're still all being exposed. Mm -hmm. And so understanding your risk and how to attack that risk is really important. I want to make a really important point. There is, there is, a, um, there is a graph on our website that's pretty easy to find, and it's about early versus late detection. So stage one detection versus stage four detection. When we look at breast cancer, stage one detection, which is the early or local stage, so it's not metastasized, that's a 99% survival rate. And if you, um, if you uh, wait, either miss the signs, the, um, 
the medical community misses the signs, if somebody misses it, your, your, um, your ability to survive is dramatically reduced, dramatically reduced. And so um, thinking about early versus late stage detection, we really wanna make sure that uh, we get there. Think about um, uh, colon cancer, for instance, pretty common in the fire service, right? It's a very common uh, cancer. So survival rates are in the 90s, 91% if you're stage one diagnosis. If it's not caught until stage four, it can plummet to 7%. Wow. in stage four. So that's a huge difference, a huge difference. And if you do survive in the stage four range, your normal now has quotes around it. Your normal is going to be very, very different. Your life is very compromised. And so when you talk to oncologists, they'll tell you stage one diagnosis, we're talking about treatment and cure. Stage four diagnosis, we're talking about prolonging life. Mm. And that's a very different conversation. Mm -hmm. And so we want to make sure that we can, if, you know, if you have to, we, we're not immune to cancer yet. We haven't figured that out. Mm -hmm. So if you have to be one of the people who are diagnosed, one of the almost 50% of firefighters that are diagnosed, then it's really important that you understand how to detect these things early. Um, we know that screenings are available. Firefighters are being heavily marketed in many different, uh, by many different businesses who are offering different types of screenings. So just make sure that you know what you're getting and also be very sure that you understand who's reading the results and what you need to do with those results, right? That's really important as well. Um, but the idea that that's the only thing that you would have to do doesn't work. So we know that there's, in the United States, the CDC only recommends four screenings for cancer, uh, lung can uh, CT lung scans, mammograms, pap smears, and colonoscopies. Those are the only four. So that leaves a whole lot of cancers that we don't have recommended screenings for. Only 14% of cancers are found through those screenings, which means patient awareness and action is accounting for almost 86% of the diagnosis. So it's super important um, to understand, to understand that that's patient responsibility and acknowledgement to be able to act. And what's the cost associated with them with going through to tech together to get this education and um, sort of open people's awareness? It's a whopping zero a whopping zero dollars. So we count on, um, for the fire service, it's so important that we get this information in front of every firefighter. We count on um, grants, foundations, really generous donors. The Last Call Foundation out of Massachusetts um, in memory of firefighter Michael Kennedy, his mom, Kathy Crosby Bell is an amazing human. Um, the Last Call Foundation is a great supporter of ours. Um, we, we partner with, uh, with some other organizations like the Firefighter Cancer Support Network. Um, and we work together to make sure that we can get enough funding to be able to bring this to um, to fire departments around the country. The only time we ever have to charge for something is travel fees. So if we're going to be going out to you know a large department to do some training, we just have to cover our travel. But other than that, the training, the materials, the resources, all free. Virtual training, all free. Um, and it's just so important that we that we do this. We want to make sure that we can maintain that. So we really we ask for any help that we can get mm. from people who who know that funding is available or can offer us some connection to that is uh, is always appreciated. But we want to make sure we get this in the in the hands of every firefighter. Awesome. Well, I'm really grateful for the work you do, and I I just really hope that this you know can help then push that. Um, knowledge out to people and they can, you know, bring it to their own awareness and reach out and start to get uh, healthier and, uh, you know, maybe they'll enjoy their careers as long as they can and enjoy their retirement. Absolutely.